The worst case scenario for React server components just happened. There is an unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability in React server components we recommend upgrading immediately. Yeah, this is really bad, like CVSS level of 10 bad. Now, luckily it has been caught and fixed. Just make sure you upgrade React immediately and hosting providers like Vassell and Cloudflare claim they patched it on their end with the WAF rule, but I have seen some people say there are ways around that. So please just upgrade. I mean, AWS have even reported that they've seen cyber threat groups rapidly trying to exploit this. And that's no surprise. This is remote code execution on basically any site that uses the Next.js server or the React server package. And you don't even need to be using server actions to be vulnerable to this exploit. So let me show you the vulnerability in action. First, I'm going to create a next app using version 16.06, .06, since that's the latest version that is vulnerable. And I'm simply going to go through all of the normal defaults. Then all I've done with the boilerplate it's given us is simply build it for production and start the server. And we can see it's up and running here. Next, I'm going to store a secret text file on my Mac's desktop since my Mac is acting as the server here. And finally, I'll send a post request to my Next.js application. The problem though, is that post request was no ordinary post request. As you can see here, it's been able to execute some code on the Next.js server. And in my case, I simply made it echo you have been pwned and then cat the contents of that secret file. In my case, we were simply seeing this in the terminal output, but since you have remote code execution, you can do anything the server could. So you could extract that data via a curl request or just basically run anything that you want. This is remote code execution, and you can see how this is really bad. Now there's actually two CVEs related to this issue. The first one is for the React server package, and you can see this has that score of 10. And the second one is simply for the Next.js server, since that uses React server as a dependency, and they decided to have another CVE for that one as well. And credit where credit's due, this vulnerability called React2 Shell was discovered by Lachlan Davidson, and he has a great write-up here. He's also published the original proof of concepts for this vulnerability on his GitHub, and there's also a quick TLDR of how this works. For a more detailed explanation, I found this proof of concept on GitHub. So let me take you through this and go over the steps to see how a post request sent to the Next.js server can then run code. The root cause of the issue comes from how the server and the client talk to each other. Instead of just using JSON to handle complex structures like components themselves, server components use a custom serializer called the React Flight Protocol. This lets the server and the client send each other chunks of data via form data. To show this in action, I've set up a server action here called process payload, and it simply just logs out the data that it receives. Now, if I send that server action, those three chunks that we were just looking at, when it actually reaches the server action, you can see it's been deserialized into a very simple object. So what's happening with the React Flight Protocol deserializer before it gets to that server action is it receives this chunk data and this dollar notation is simply a reference to another chunk. So chunk zero here is simply an array with dollar one. So that's saying just go to chunk one and use that value. And then in chunk one, for the value of name here, we then have dollar two, which says go to chunk two, but we also have path traversal. So it says go to path two, but then this colon notation here says get us the value of fruit name. So this is why we get the value of cherry and the final object down here doesn't have this fruit name property since we simply wanted chunk one and chunk one just extracted that information directly using path traversal. The logic of this path traversal functionality is where the exploit takes place. Essentially, what researchers noticed, if they sent a request where the path traversal wanted to access a property that didn't exist, so in this case, the object is simply empty, but we're saying go to chunk one and access that property of A, it would return a 500 server error saying it can't read the properties of undefined when it was trying to read A. This means that there was no check for whether that requested key is actually set on the object before it tries to access it. Without that check in place, they realized that what they could do is send a path traversal where it tries to access the object's prototype. The reason accessing the object's prototype worked is because the path traversal code in React server looked something like this. Up here, we have our path and we're splitting based on the colon. Then when we actually start to traverse that path, you can see down here where my path is set to underscore underscore proto, all we're doing is passing it into the value, which in this case is the object, which will be chunk one, but then we're just simply providing it with the raw path. There is no check for whether this path actually existed on that object. This means that if we're simply doing it like this, we can start to access the JavaScript internals like that prototype, which every object in JavaScript has. For our path then, imagine this $1 up here was simply this object that we have. We are then accessing its prototype. We see in the console log here that that returns the actual prototype of the object. 
And we'll come back to why that's an issue in a bit. But first, I want to show you what they did to fix this, as it was very simple. Essentially, all they did is before you access the value at path, they add in an if statement, which uses the has own property function. And if it turns out that the object doesn't have that path as an own property, it will simply throw an error. We can see that down here when it tries to traverse that malicious path that we had earlier. This time it's just saying invalid reference as proto is not an own property. This function is only looking for properties on the object itself and not the internals of JavaScript. If we go back to the vulnerable code though, what is the issue with having the object's prototype? Well, the problem is if we traverse up from our object to the constructor, this is the object constructor, we can then traverse up to the function constructor. The reason the function constructor is bad is because it lets you create functions from a string. So in C down here, I set test equal to the function constructor. Then where we have evil here, this is set to new test. And in here, I simply pass in the code that I want to run. So now if we simply run evil, you can see using that constructor we've been able to access, using that path traverse, logic, I can now run this code. So essentially in the full chunk vulnerability that we'll see later, this is the piece where I want to add in the remote code I want to execute on the server. But we're not completely done yet. The problem is we do have this function constructor, but we actually have no way of calling it. So if I remove this call here in my example, you can see this function simply isn't going to run. So they needed to find a way to get the function that they're creating to actually run on the React server. The simple explanation of how they did this is they took advantage of how JavaScript handles promises. When you await something in JavaScript, it simply checks whether it has a then method, and if it does, it will simply run that automatically. So you can see my demo object has then, and that is the run this function. And if we await demo, we then actually run the function, which is hello world. Now there's a few more technical pieces, but to summarize, using the tricks that we just looked at, you can craft a fake chunk object that looks like a real one, but crucially, we have this then value here, which points to our prototype traversal. The final piece is then this $B reference in the value here. This $B is actually the reference for blobs, and resolving it simply calls formData.get. But what we've done is we've set up our fake chunk. So down here, formData.get actually points to our function constructor using that prototype traversal, and underscore prefix here contains any malicious code that we want to run on the server. In my case, this is the chunk that I used earlier. So this one simply console logs, you have been pwned. And then since we're on the server, we can say process.mainmodule.require. We can get the child process, do exec sync, then we can run whatever terminal command we want. So in this case, it was simply catting the contents of that file. There we go, that is remote code execution. There we go, hopefully this has given you a good insight into how the vulnerability worked. It was quite a technical heavy one, but it's also quite simplistic in how you run it. Has this made you think twice about server components and maybe you think they're a mistake now? Let me know in the comments down below. Or you there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.